Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be adding detail. We're at the final stage, and at this point in the process, I like to take a moment, step back, and look around my painting for any areas that I feel could be fine-tuned or adjusted before adding fine detail. Is anything too dark or too light in your painting? Compare your painting to the photo reference. Look for any shapes that don't match. Turn your painting and reference upside down and look for inconsistencies. This next step is going to be different from one painting to the next and unique to each student's painting. So I am going to move quickly through this stage because the areas you decide you want to adjust or add detail to or soften or brighten the color on are going to be different from mine. Having said that, I still want to take this opportunity to show you what I look for and how I approach small adjustments at this stage of the process. For example, I think this area in here could be a brighter first value, and it's a good spot to add some more detail and texture to. Aside from bright highlights, most of the work you would do in this part of the process is done with a detail brush and often using very washy, diluted paint. I'm just scanning over the side of the wedge, looking for anything that dried too dark or isn't standing out enough, any small spots that I missed or want to adjust the shape of, and I'm only using first value from the grayscale for this. Next, I want to brighten some of the colors in this area, because now that I have this turquoise color in the background, I can see how the colors will play together and off of each other, which means I can add some bright red-orange accents that will really stand out. I've started by bringing in some second-value orange into this spot where the grapefruit is showing through a rip in the pith. And notice how washy my paint is. This is just a transparent glaze to add color, like a filter. I'm not changing the structure of any shapes here. I know it seems like such a small thing to add, and there's no rule I'm following to decide what I adjust. I'm just addressing what I notice. That's part of what makes every painting unique. And remember, it's an accumulation of small things that add up. Next, I want to paint in an accent color over here, some full chroma red-orange showing through that transparent skin, something to really contrast that turquoise background. So I've picked up a full chroma combination of third value red and orange, and I'm going to paint it right on top of the brightest spots of color on the wedge. Make sure your paint is very diluted for this, because we're going to be dissolving it out instead of blending it into an adjacent wet color. Just brighten any area that your eye can find. And once you step back, you'll start to see our color scheme come together. That beautiful contrast of muted reds and oranges alongside these full chroma colors against a turquoise background, like the colors in the sunset. Next time you see a sunset, just using what you've learned about color theory so far in this course, look at it with new eyes. Pay attention to how much gray you see in it and how sparingly high chroma colors are used. You'll find that there's more muted colors in the best ones than you expected. They're the reason the brightest colors look so beautiful, by contrast. And look for the split complementary color scheme in the combinations of warm and cool colors. I assure you it's there. Now to add some texture. As I mentioned before, this subject matter doesn't have highlights, but it has bright spots. So next I'm going to work my way around the painting, looking for any spots that stand out as the highlight, and paint them with thick first value white. So you should be using first value from the grayscale. You want your paint to be as thick as possible. This is your chance to get a little texture in your painting, for the light to pick up when it's hanging on a wall. 
Whether or not you do this step is up to you. How much detail you put into your painting is completely up to you. So don't follow what I do exactly here. Look at your painting and decide what you want to define or highlight and have some fun with it. Let that dry. Next, I want to paint a few more accent colors into the most colorful spots on the fruit. I especially want to brighten this area where the light is shining through the fruit and really exaggerate the vibrance of the color. This one spot should be the brightest, most chromatic color in your painting. So I've mixed a little second and third value red, third value orange, and a tiny bit of third value gray to make it slightly more opaque. And using my detail brush, I'm going to dab this bright color anywhere light is shining through the wedge. Notice how far back I'm holding my brush. That's because I want my accents to feel a bit painterly and looser. You can keep yours cleaner if you'd like. It's up to you. There, beautiful. I'll move to the left side next, and I'm going to lean a little more towards the red scale for this area. Look closely at the photo reference. I see some pink in there. I think this side can get even brighter. And there's a few spots left up here. Okay, finished. I'll let that dry, then apply one last coat of clear acrylic medium before painting the final coat of turquoise over the background. And to make sure my adjustments and details look correct. 